Actors, we've all got issues, so let's talk about them. I'm Juan Yala, and welcome to Actors with Issues. Each week, we bring you interviews with actors from across TV, film, and Broadway, taking many deep dives into their careers and getting into the successes, the struggles, and of course, the issues that they face as actors. That's enough about us. Let's dive into the episode. Today's guests will be seen in a number of projects this year, including upcoming feature films Where the Crawdads Sing, Devotion, and Apple TV Plus series Blackbird. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Logan McRae. Logan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, our usual opening segment. It's called Getting to Know You. It is a 60-second rapid-fire round of questions, and uh, we'll start the timer with coffee or tea. Coffee in the morning and tea at night. Film or television? Film. Stage acting or screen acting? Uh, screen. I have never done stage. Uh, drama or comedy? Comedy. Hero or villain? Ooh, villain. Horror movie or rom-com? Uh, rom-com. What actors had the biggest influence on you? Oh, man. Um, probably Christian Bale, actually. Good choice. <laughs> Uh, what is the last show that you binge watched? I am binge watching Ozark right now. What was your first non-acting job? Oh, I I was a I worked a retail job at Abercrombie. <laughs> I feel like we all did at some point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, what is a movie that never fails to make you laugh? Ooh. Probably super bad. <laughs> and that's time. Uh, so last question. Describe your most memorable audition in three words. And memorable can mean good or bad. So that I leave up to you. Way too casual. <laughs> <laughs> I think I walked in expecting something very intense. And I walked into the room and everybody's like, hey, how are you? And it just was like, I, I think I hyped yeah. up the moment so much. <laughs> Uh, so looking, you know, no two uh, artist journeys are like, uh, especially with our show, we've interviewed so many people at this point. Uh, so what was it about acting that sort of reeled you in to want to pursue it on a career level? So my career started with modeling. Um, I was lucky enough to go to New York City and started modeling um, the, during college. And it just kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, what's the next step, you know? And that's what it was where it was like, you know, a no knock on modeling at all, but there's a certain depth to it. And uh, I just wanted something more, you know? And mm -hmm. somebody's like, well, maybe just take like a commercial acting class. So I took the very basics where it's like, turn left, turn right, like smile back to the camera, all that kind of stuff. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, but now what, you know? I got introduced to this great sensory teacher in New York and I started doing some sensory work. Um, and it was this, flood of emotions that I was like, Oh, I, I didn't know these existed type of thing. Um, and when I started working through that, and then she also put on an improv class and the combination of the two, I was just like, this is so fun, you know, and it was just something where it was touching on things that I never had before. And then I was lucky enough that I finally got to a point where she actually asked me, she was like, you're auditioning for stuff, right? And I was like, no, I'm just kind of doing this for fun. And she's like, okay, well, I need to have a conversation with somebody for you. So um, I, I somewhat fell into it and somewhat pursued it at the same time, too. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of caught the bug just from just acting classes, really. It's always that sort of like first bit of curiosity that will either reel you in or you know like this is not for me and in your case it was totally for you yeah, uh, yeah yeah totally i mean i was i remember the first class i think this teacher had me like bawling crying in this like corner in 15 minutes and i'm like what's going on and she <laughs> she told me afterwards she's like if i can't i guess she kind of went through the same same steps with every student and she's like if i can't get that reaction out of somebody i know that they just they don't have the emotional depth to take it where they need to. So mm -hmm. it, it was, it was just luck. Cause I, I didn't know it was in me, I guess. Yeah. And with all of the projects that you have coming up, so you have two feature films and uh, the Apple TV plus series, which of those was your first booking? Cause I know sort of production timelines are all over the place. Um, yeah. So, so which um, <laughs> my first booking is actually, will be the last one that comes out. Of course um, <laughs> it was, it was devotion. Um, and uh, it's funny enough, I actually got the call about Crawdads 
when I was on location for devotion. So it was a very weird day and experiencing all of that once. So yeah, devotion was first. Um, and then crawdads and then blackbird. So with crawdads, that is based on a like wildly popular, you know, best-selling novel. Um, Reese Witherspoon and her production company are the executive producers. Um, so what was your experience like working on that film? Um, it was, I mean, I didn't, what you were touching on in terms of the size and scale of popularity of the book, I had no idea until mm -hmm. I knew of the book when I had the audition. And then when I actually booked it, I started to look into it and I was like, wow, this is, this is unreal. So, you know, uh, you know how audition prep goes where you only have X amount of time. So I wasn't able to sit there and, and read a novel in the amount of time that I had for this audition. Um, so I started to read that novel and the experience on set was pretty cool in the sense that it, they did such a good job in being like, oh, this is like, this is our childhood home. Like, this is exactly what the book says our childhood home is. Like, mm. they actually, they truly built a home 20 feet from a river. You know, it, it was crazy because it was very, very real where you didn't it almost made my job easier because i didn't have to imagine so much because it was so accurate to what i read in the book and almost so accurate to what i pictured as i was reading it it's, it's always incredible seeing sort of how because you know with with green screen and the incredible technology they have these days like um i was recently watching something like how they shot the mandalorian series mm. and it's like completely like led room and all of that and but still when when productions go back to sort of like the roots of filmmaking and like, you know, full sets, building entire like buildings and stuff like that. Like, it's still so cool to see that they still do that because they could totally sort of cop out and have a green screen outside of a, you know, the first floor of a fake house in a where in a, in a studio somewhere. Yeah, but yeah. You know, I'm sure that yeah, added was, so much. Oh, it was, it was great in the sense that I was like, I, I, it was so detailed even beyond what, my imagination of this childhood home was, which was amazing. And just to be able to walk in that I could truly, and I think what takes place in one of my scenes is very real because I'm experiencing something, you know, in true depth because I'm looking at this home in every single individual feature of it. So it was, it almost made my job easier. Like I said. Yeah. Yeah. Like nothing sort of the, the Hollywood magic that's done like behind the scenes didn't take you out of it. And with your character in um, Crawdad, how did how similar would you say you are to your character? So Jody is a very stoic person, um, and funny enough, I, I I actually kind of read a lot of stoicism, like philosophy based stuff, and I did mm -hmm. that even before the character. So I think that that was really kind of what shown through during my audition process was, you know, I have this uh, approach to life that like it can get difficult, but you know, it's that day to day, like grounding of what you're trying to do. And I think that I was lucky enough that there was a lot of me in Jody and a lot of Jody in me. So your career is still sort of fairly new, um, as mm -hmm. you were saying before, but I'm curious if maybe something crosses over from when you were modeling or if there's anything that you sort of realized more recently um, you know, given the name of our show is Actors with Issues. So we talk about sort of the obstacles and stuff that actors go through. Um, so what comes to mind as something that you've dealt with or maybe still are dealing with um, that could sort of provide some insight to our audience? Yeah, I think um, there's positives and negatives. You know, I actually saw a lot of success and, you know, it, it increased when I was taking acting classes on the modeling front. So I was very lucky mm -hmm. that I think it brought more depth to a photograph. You know, if you have mm -hmm. something going on behind your eyes and you, the thought process that you're going through while you're taking a photograph, it helps create more of a beautiful image. And I think the harder side of it was actually the reverse, because I think it's very easy to be labeled like a model that wants to act you know and it's like and a lot of people are like oh he's just kind of like this pretty guy that you know thinks he's going to do this other thing too you know so <laughs> i think there was a stereotype that i had to kind of fight against to kind of break through and it, it took a very long time i mean i know everybody's success stories are you know the, the number of failures are much greater than obviously your number of successes and um 
I personally still deal with that. You know, I think it's very easy and I still get all the auditions that it's like, Oh, cute guy. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very easy um, thing to lean into. And I've, I've fought very hard against all of it. And sort of uh, looking ahead, what is on your bucket list? Like any dream franchises or uh, genres or co-stars um, or do Ooh. you want to dabble into like writing or directing or any sort of other aspect? You know, I think, I think just a larger, larger and larger roles, you know, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. there's specifics and stuff. You, when, when you were saying hero or villain, I think, you know, a villain would be so fun when you could actually do it on a larger scale. Um, you know, something as you know, just, just a more of a lead character, whether it's a film or series or whatever. Um, and I think it really is just as simple as, I, I want to live in somebody a little bit longer than I've had the opportunity to so far, you know, it's mm. just to really see a character's overall journey take place on such a large scale would be fun. I think it's much more detailed. There's so many more things that you can go through and even just the thought processes of what that character all is. I just want to do one on a, on a larger scale. Yeah. To me, the villains are always sort of like the most interesting. They can be one note depending how they're written, but more often than not, they're just like the most like complex characters. Yeah. Um, well, a lot, a lot of, a lot of villains don't, don't think they're villains, you know, that, that's oh, right. a crazy yeah. thing that most people don't realize is a lot of villains, a lot of villains don't see that there's anything wrong with them, you know, which is, which is uh, mentally a whole nother place to take stuff. <laughs> right. And, uh, I'm curious with, with, uh, crawdads, with devotion, with, um, what is the Blackbird. Blackbird. I was at Black Mirror. I'm like, that's not yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, between those those three projects and all the other stuff you have coming up, which one are you sort of like most looking forward to um, for audiences to see? Not to play favorites, but, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I can sit there and say which one that I'm, I, I know the most. I mean, obviously, the, the two that are coming up um sooner blackbird and crawdad so i know a little bit more about them i mean probably just the scale as the audience does because i've only seen previews so far i've seen some stuff of crawdads a little bit more than that but um you know i love the look of crawdads i think crawdads i, I when i first saw the preview it kind of gave me chills because um just the overall thriller and just slightly darker vibe i was so excited for i think paulie morgan the dp just did a phenomenal job for the overall vibe and feel of it and of course the director as well it just it's i i was just so happy i was so scared it was going to be commercialized and stuff and i don't think it is i think it has got that darker thriller aspect that's going to like make people interested in it even yeah. the people that know what the storyline is i think they're going to really want to watch it yeah that's awesome and between uh, which one are you sort of most excited to, if, if the answer is different, um, to like see the final product, like sort of like what you did on set versus the final product. So uh, devotion will be cool. Just even on a film set, just, I mean, it's the same idea, not the same idea. The, the films are not the same idea, but visually as you know, what makes Top Gun appealing is, you know, you're, you're seeing things and shot in ways that are, you know, what these people actually experience with planes and, you know, whatnot. Um, but I'm also really excited about Blackbird. Blackbird looks good. It really, really does. When I saw that preview, I was like, this, this could get creepy and I kind of like it, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Blackbird, it seems interesting. And I, you know, I know some of the locales and whatnot that they shot it at and it's, it'll be cool to see it brought to life. I think they did a really good job with it. And uh, before we wrap up, so we always end with um, another, it's a non rapid fire round uh, of okay. questions. Uh, so fill in the blank. If I weren't working in the arts, I'd be. Ah, uh, wow. There's a lot of different ways that I think I could have gone. I mean, I was an economics and political science minor in college. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Finance is boring, but um, I do enjoy that kind of stuff. And I also, um, I enjoy real estate as well. So, you know, probably a typical job somewhere along those lines. Uh, what role have you had the most fun playing? Huh. I really enjoyed my role in Blackbird because I just kind of got to be the leads like, 
goofy high school friend that were like still stuck in high school and just these guys that are like way past their you know their prime their everything and still just like living in the glory days yeah. <laughs> so it was just fun to kind of just shoot the shit with friends for a day <laughs> too you know yeah uh what's the best advice you've ever gotten best advice wow um you know i I think it's just, you know, consistency is really all that it is. Mm -hmm. It's consistency. It's your day in and day out. Um, simple as that. I think if you can be consistent and, you know, your highs aren't too high and your lows aren't too low, then I think overall you're going to succeed. And what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? Ooh, worst advice. probably not to go to New York city. <laughs> I mean, there was a point in time where like some people, you know, I was in the middle of college when I went to New York city and it, my intention was to go out there for a summer and I never left. Um, mm. and you know, if I hadn't gone, I think that life would have been, I don't know, in finance and real estate, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's just, it just, to not take the leap. I think, you know, take it. Yeah. And lastly, in 10 words or less, what advice would you give to a young actor? Um, I think just don't give up. Simple as that. Just don't mm -hmm. give up. You know, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days, but don't give up. Logan, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with us today. Uh, if anyone wants to find you on Instagram or anywhere on social media, where can they find you? Uh, so it's just my name, Logan McCray, um, L-O-G-A-N-M-A-C-R-A-E. Awesome. And folks, as always, you can find us on Instagram at Actors with Issues. Give me a follow at Juan Yala Official and be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts and check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Actors with Issues podcast for new episodes every Monday. And don't miss Logan McRae in Where the Crowd Dads Sing in theaters everywhere July 15th. I'm Juan Yala. This is Actors with Issues and we'll see you next week.